Guys, I'd love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for my cross comparison between Hylian and Nikola. I've provided a long version to the same video. I'm going to give you the summary of that video in the next 10 minutes so you can have some context. If you do want to kick over and see the grander conversation on these two companies that are looking to uh, put a dent into the EV space, you're going to want to check that out. I do it weekly uh, on the channel, but let's jump get r right into it here. The, the staunch comparison between these two um, really is, is quite easy to make. Unfortunately, the correlation between these two find themselves uh, coupled together in stock action where one will go down. It's guaranteed that the other will go down as well. Uh, and when they do trade in correlation and they do move north, they tend to do so together. Um, I, I would suggest that uh, you do your own due diligence on these two companies. They are the premier uh, players right now in the EV space. Uh, Nikola uh, is looking to exploit and explore the options that are provided by their cutting edge technology uh, through hydrogen fuel uh, cell. Uh, as well as highly on looking to move toward more of an agnostic future and eventually to fuel cells. I think these folks are looking at the same things, uh, but their approach is drastically different, and I want to draw a distinction between these two. So let's get right into it. Cross comparison between Hylion and Nikola, it really just sets uh, the table to understand Hylion looking to augment uh, an existing Class 8 trucking space through the introduction of just the powertrain alone to help augment uh, with some proprietary technology uh, in the in-cab display um, and the maintenance and servicing software that they own, um, they are looking to add to the existing fleet and look to add uh, value where it is are the most soft spots in the industry. And make no mistake, my friends, this is aimed directly at uh, reducing our reliance on the diesel fuel. Okay, right now 99% of the Class 8 trucking space uh, is using diesel fuel, and fleets and customers alone uh, really do believe that the movement away from fossil fuels uh, is the way to go, at least to provide some level of optionality going forward. Nikola, however, wants to actually replace. Um, they want to uh, really take a stab at this industry and really look to introduce their solution, which is a bolts up from the ground up solution that they've actually brought forward basically as their own OEM. They're looking to do this on their own. They are looking to uh, basically build what they feel is the solution of the future through hydrogen fuel cell. And there's a lot of schools of thought that believe that they're onto something here with regard to uh, using the many benefits of H2 right now on the early stages of fuel availability and fuel cost being a lot more than that of our diesel counterpart. Um, but that is expected to change over time with the emergence of hydrogen uh, and the emergence of those fueling stations going forward. So Hylion's looking more at a collaboration or an augmenting type of approach, whereas Nickel is looking to start from the ground up and provide those products directly to to actually replace those existing trucks within the fleet. All right, with regard to the fuel of choice, uh, I've already mentioned Nikola is looking to uh, introduce its uh, H2 product, which is hydrogen uh, and hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, uh, Hylion, as uh, a counter to that, is looking to uh, be a little bit more fuel agnostic, and they'll be introducing uh, at the end of 2023 their uh, renewable natural gas uh, hyper truck that is a, a semi that uh, actually powers the onboard generator with renewable natural gas. Their idea is that they do this on the onset where there's more availability of renewables and compressed natural gas as opposed to the lack of availability uh, from hydrogen. But to understand these two, differentiate them and really do kind of put them in their own uh, uh, playing fields as they look to uh, get involved in this uh, EV space and the Class 8 uh, space. With regard to maintenance, Hylian has more of a modular type of application where, if necessary, the battery uh, system needs to be taken out. The idea is that they can remove that unit altogether, ship it back to Hylion. Hylion ships them a new unit, it gets pushed in, and that's it. Very little need for any type of high-end mechanics. Uh, and they're looking for uh, more of kind of a modular type of swap out application there. Um, Nikola is actually looking to uh, replace the old idea of needing 
uh, mechanics uh, to continually service the diesel industry, which is very, very expensive. It adds a huge uh, uh, cost to ownership to these trucks as the expected downtime is uh, anticipated over the life of that truck uh, to really affect the bottom line and take away from that maximum onloading that it can do. Um, but to replace that with their own uh, suite of mechanics, increase the education and the opportunity to service those hydrogen fuel cells as opposed to our legacy mechanics that have been so diligent working on our ICE engines uh, for the last hundred years. Fuel availability is huge here, guys. We need to understand that Hylion is looking to leverage existing infrastructure, especially on the compressed natural gas side and the renewable natural gas side. Uh, infrastructure does exist now, whereas Hylion is looking more toward um, the uh, fuel being hydrogen. Now the availability of hydrogen right now is uh, rather lean, so relying on the availability to unfold over time as well as uh, looking to drive down that cost of hydrogen. So uh, the, the fuel of choice right now uh, really does kind of fall into the discussion about the initiative that each of these companies are looking to pursue, uh, but uh, highly on more so on the renewables, uh, CNG with an eventual move into hydrogen uh, and Nikola right now looking to move into hydrogen and looking to kind of be the, the point on getting that infrastructure done uh, and to drive down the, the cost, the high cost of hydrogen right now. A big differentiator between these two, Hylion is looking to maintain uh, the current design of the trucks that the OEMs have enjoyed for many, many decades. Uh, these designs come in the form of the trucks that we know and love and we've seen on the roads, our Ken Moores, uh, our Peterbilts, our International, Volvo, Freightliner, etc. Those are some of the most common and uh, duly recognized out there in our fleets, whereas Nikola is looking to replace that design uh, and aesthetic of the truck to meet more of their high-end technology, what they have on board, lighten up the chassis where they feel like they can lighten up on that ch chassis and, um, and truck itself and actually provide a whole new concept uh, to the industry. So as an investor, you need to ask yourself, what is the industry uh, going to opt for? Are they going to really just do away with the uh, what has been tried and true uh, it, to go with a new, or is going with the new a little bit more risky? Um, it's only a matter of time where we'll kind of have more of those answers as the story unfolds and we uh, and we continue to monitor this progress going forward. Um, the Hylion with the range is actually comparable to that of diesel. Um, Nikola, there's a little bit of uncertainty that I have around the the actual range of the hydrogen fuel cell, there's just not a lot of resource out there um, on what type of range they're getting on over the road transport. Um, I've heard five to 600 miles, which is actually uh, very encouraging for some of the medium to short term uh, or, or short distance type of hauling applications, which is why I have invested in the technology. I think they're a front runner when it comes to hydrogen and the technology um, that they have rights over. Uh, so I think they'll be a player in the space, but if we're talking about long haul trucking in the class eight, um, Hylion has more of a comparable uh, advantage as far as their range that they can get out of the unit, uh, whereas it's a little bit more um, uh, understood that Nikola is a little bit more um, of a kind of a drayage type of opportunity now and is looking to really get that proof of concept and declare those specs over the long haul. Uh, Fuel costs is another comparison from Hylion that uh, it really kind of depends on what fuel of choice is being chosen for the route in question. Uh, whereas Nikola right now, the hydrogen costs um, are, are very expensive and it's uh, due to the unavailability of the fuel um, and that it's new on the market and there is a demand over hydrogen uh, to be used in some of these exploratory applications. Uh, but it's yet to be seen whether or not those fuel costs can come down over time uh, on the hydrogen side uh, and then the fuel cost on the highly end side. It really kind of just depends on um, the route that they choose. If they're able to leverage some of the credits from the government or some of the state mandates, uh, that are out there to be enjoyed on the renewable natural gas uh, and compressed natural gas side of the house or whether or not they have the ability to uh, use their Carnot generator 
uh, to, to perhaps maybe uh, burn hydrogen or conventional fuels, or even not even the hyper truck at all, to maybe look at their hybrid EX product and just burn conditional uh, diesel and add a supplement there in the cost savings, uh, and or the hybrid product in the CNG application when they're looking to supplement uh, the actual horsepower necessity, maybe in hilly terrain, they're looking to put that into the application there. Um, with regard to the environment, I think all schools of thought would agree that conceptually hydrogen is much better for the environment. Um, the question that is being mulled around when comparing these two companies right now is how efficient is hydrogen? Is it really going to have that staying power uh, that so many people are thinking that it will to have the maximum environmental benefit? Uh, and, and put this into the rigor of over-the-road transit to get the durability and payback over time. I think only time will tell on that. I have my own verdict, but when we're looking to draw a cross-connection between these two and a distinction between the two, it really helps to understand that the environmental aspect is a big one. Um, and where I would suggest that compressed natural gas to make it requires fracking, etc., is not quite as good for the environment, is that really the goal? Is that the goal of the trucking fleets to just you know, accept all of the vulnerabilities with, let's say, a hydrogen application, high cost of fuel, lack of infrastructure out there and availability of said fuel uh, for the sheer sake of what conceptually is being deemed kind of the winner of choice going forward because it does have such a phenomenal economic benefit and can drive that carbon score all the way to zero, which is fantastic. Um, so really one of those factors and attributes that we need to monitor going forward as we, um, as we allow this uh, story to unfold over time. And then finally, I will draw this distinction. Hylion has a lean business model. They're looking to augment an already existing uh, industry that is, has existed for a long, long time. Nikola is starting from the ground up. They own everything. They own the proprietary uh, rights over their product, um, right down to the bolts and the chassis uh, that they own. They own everything that uh, goes into the truck, and they have really creative control over everything that happens. Uh, in-house at the uh, Nikola factory, whereas Hylion is really reliant upon those existing relationships with those OEMs that have been pushing trucks off the line for the last few decades and hoping to augment uh, their existing product with those existing trucks to help stop gap uh, and provide those solutions to, uh, to the workforce that are really hungry to get a hold of these solutions and start on their proof of concept as this EV story, which is in the early innings, evolves over time. And it's gonna be incumbent upon us as investors to remain diligent on the story as it unfolds. And I will continue to share what I feel like is the most prudent information out there on the landscape as we monitor these two companies going forward. Guys, if you enjoy the information, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video, share the message with those folks out there that you think would enjoy my content. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.